Hey there, welcome to episode 22. I'm on a roll today, all sorts of episodes. Um, so yeah, we f actually finished the quarry project last episode, um, but we didn't really get to see it in action. So I'm just going to set it off here, then I'm going to do like a quick little tutorial on something else, and then we can uh, go back and take a look when I'm done. And uh, by then the uh, bot should have mined a little couple of things. So. I also changed um, this little bit because um, it was annoying that it would automatically start every time if I want to like edit code or something. So I started off with a question: Do you want to start a query? And then I just type Y or Yes would also work. Um, and then it goes. Um, and what we're going to do today is also going to involve user input, um, so I can show you how to do this kind of stuff uh, in a minute. But first, I'm going to have to type the letter Y a million times. So this is slightly less obnoxious than typing quarry, um, but it's still a little bit annoying. Uh, but we have to live with that for now. Right, and they're off. There we go. <laughs> um, good. <laughs> it's always really epic to see this stuff. Um, I'm just going to grab another wireless mining turtle. Right, so back over here, our once um, humble starting point, I still have uh, the old code. I did not want to edit disk at all. I wanted to CD to disk. I beg your pardon. Pretty sure there's a disk there. I guess when you edit disk, it breaks. Are you kidding me? That's very peculiar. And I think I know why it's happening. Yeah, I know why it's happening. <coughs> Um, because the wireless thing is on this side, you can't also have a disk on that side. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of stupid, but that's how it is. Anyway. So here's like our old quarry um, code from before we started the whole RedNet thing. Um, and I'm just going to change the Z coordinate to 193 here so that that's correct. Alright, so someone asked in the comments, uh, which I do actually read, uh, someone asked um, how to do user input, like he wanted to be able to tell the bot, uh, go to a certain location and then mine there. Um, so here's how to do that basically. So first of all, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's useful to do some prints so that whoever's using um, the program knows what's going on. So print, um, I don't know, whoops, yeah, I'll save it, that's fine. Um, print, uh, i going to mine a quarry for you. Fill in the coordinates and the dimensions. Um, bad spelling. Alright, I don't know if that's the correct spelling to be honest. Um, being a little bit stupid. But dimension, that's an S, right? Not a T. Jesus. Anyway. Fill in the X. Coordinates. Okay. Right. So we printed a bunch of things, and now the user has to do something, or aka the person who's going to start up this program. Um, so, how this works is really simple. Um, you use one function, and it's called read. And what it does is it waits for the user to type something, and then um, it stores that in a variable. Um, or not necessarily, 
but we're going to store it in a variable. We're going to say um, x Corey is equal to read. And just to be sure, we're going to convert this to a number because I think that it um, reads it as uh, as text. Right. So now we have to get the uh, we have the x coordinate. That's good. Um, fill in the z coordinate. Then we can say z quarry is equal to number, and then we do another read. And then we just need the y coordinate. There we go. And then we say y quarry is equal to two number. Yep, and read. There we go. I'm just gonna make this a little bit shorter because I'm using a couple too many lines. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. Okay. So we've got our X, Z, and Y. I think it would also be cool to be able to um, set the dimensions. Um, so let's say... Um, fill in the width. Go and then we're going to have. Um, so we've got the number of lines, I believe it was, uh, is equal to to number. Read and then we'll do one more. Fill in the length. Now, what the length is and what the width is, not very well defined here, but I'm just going <laughs> to go with it. I'm just going to say the number of lines is the width and uh, line length, I believe I called the variable. There we go. All right, and then he starts scoring. Now, right now we have dig quarry and then a bunch of uh, coordinates. So we're going to make this quarry. Z quarry and y quarry, and it's not going to be minus x quarry. That would be a bad idea. Right, and that's it. Uh, before I leave, I'm just going to check that it was actually line length that I need to do, and not something else. Whoops, a little bit too far there. Line length, that's it. Lines three. Yeah, okay, good. So as soon as you uh, type in the line length and the lines, it will immediately put those in here. Um, X, Z, and Y query are also being edited. But that should be okay. Um, right, so let's find a nice location. Um, let's say we're gonna go. I don't know, like over, over here. Let me just write this down. So we've got x minus one eight seven, z one seven two, and y. 76. Now we'll do like a, I don't know, 5 by 5 quarry. There we go. Mm. Right, so we need to fix coordinates. Minus 187. Enter. The Z coordinate was 172. And the Y coordinate was 76. And we're going to be looking at 5 by. Five query. This doesn't work out completely because the 
line length that to be one lower than I actually put in there, but doesn't matter. Um, that could be fixed later, that's all details. Point is, now you have a bot that you can um, put down somewhere and then tell it where to mine, and it'll do all of that and then uh, return home. Um, so that was a little tutorial on user input. Now, of course, when you have user input, um, you ha also have people who are going to completely mess it up for you and like fill in words when they should be filling in numbers and all that. So, um, with this kind of thing, it's handy to check the user input and uh, make sure that um, people are actually filling in numbers or not, or like positive numbers when they should be filling in positive numbers of negative. Like, I could say the the dimensions of the <laughs> of the core need to be minus six by minus two, and that wouldn't make any sense. So those kinds of things you gotta check for that, um, which basically ends up being a bunch of if statements um, to see if the user input is the right kind of input. Um, yes, yeah, so this guy's gonna build a five by five quarry, which is actually six by five right now, but it's fine. Um, and then he'll go back to where he was. Uh, one thing with this, it would be nice, of course, to be able to carry this guy around um, and put him down anywhere, and then. Uh, be able to just start it up without having to fill in his own coordinates, um, but that doesn't work right now. So right now you have to change his coordinates um, when you put him down, uh, which does mean that um, what you could do is also add in the user input to just fill in the coordinates as well, his co starting coordinates. Uh, you could even um, let him fill in the home coordinates and stuff, but that's all things that you could um, just expand upon. Uh, but right now this is just you know how to do user input well the read function, that was it. Very simple, and you can do this kind of stuff with it. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to see how our guys are getting on here. Oh, oh, they all stopped. Now, here is, oh, this guy's still going. Okay, that's interesting. Ah, was this the sand issue? Yeah, this looks like the sand issue. Yeah, this is the sand issue. Okay. I thought I'd fix that. Remember a while back we did a while loop um, where it, while there was a block in front of you, you would um, dig. But I guess I forgot to save that or it doesn't quite work the way it should. Because what happened here is they dug a block of sand and then a block of sand fell like right in front of them and now they can't move forward. So they're trying to move forward until it goes out the way. But that's not going to happen, of course, until I dig it. There it goes. Now the same's going to happen. Oh, stuck. So yeah, um, I'm going to check the code in a minute to see how that how that happened. It's kind of annoying. I have a destruction catalyst on me. Haha. <laughs> Winning. There we go. Good luck. Oh, he's going to get run into problems here again, isn't he? I hate sand and gravel. They screw you over every time. So that's another tip when you go mining. Don't <laughs> do it on top of sand and stuff, because it just messes up your bots. Um, in the meantime, these guys are still having a good time, because they didn't start on a massive pile of sand. Um, so here's an example of a whoop, robot returning home with stuff. Let's see, we can see his inventory. There he goes. He's got a bunch of sand on him and some cobble. And uh, he's going to head home, drop that off. Oh, save this guy as well, I guess. Right. Oh, is he home yet? Oh, there he goes. I just want to see this work, and then uh, I'll call it a success, and we're done. And then next episode, we can start in making the uh, central computer a little bit more interesting and intelligent. So we're going to chuck all this stuff out here. Um, this doesn't seem to be working just yet, because for some reason, I need to pull out... Oh, a gem and then put it back in and then it will start working again. Um, that's a bit weird. And he should head back home. Where is he? Oh, he's still here. 
Oh, that's a different one. Oh, there he goes. He's going to head back to his quarry and continue. Right, so good, we uh, we finished and it's working. Uh, I'm going to check the code to see um, what's up with the whole getting stuck by insanity, because that shouldn't be happening anymore, but I'll let you know if I figure out what's going on there. Um, thanks for watching. Um, see you next time. And then, I don't know what we're going to do yet. Probably something with this guy. Uh, we'll see. I've been like three episodes today, so kind of running out of stuff to talk about.